Howdy, 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 everybody, and welcome to Suzuka for the start of another great year here on iRacing in the Formula 3.5 Championship. I'm Austin Knight. I'm joined by Alessandro Daldane with Marco Barbonera here in Suzuka on Apex Racing TV for the start of the iRacing Formula 3.5 Championship here in 2021. Hi, Austin. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's a pleasure to be here for another exciting season. Definitely familiar faces today, but also some newcomers uh, to the series. Maybe also because of the new cars coming out. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, we will have a very interesting and great racing here at Suzuka. It's always a track for open wheelers that provides great fun and opportunities to make great passes. Yeah, the faces might, some faces might be new here, but I can tell you the old, the old faces, some of them might be taking a little bit of break, you know, it's around the holidays, so I kind of expect some of the other drivers not to always be here, but hey, that opens up the door to see a lot of new faces here at Suzuka. Great track for racing these cars, always exciting around here. Uh, very wide and very uh, challenging for overtakes. We should see some great racing as currently Greg Olsen is sitting at the top of the time sheets. And uh, looking through this field, it's lower as well than what we're usually used to, but I can certainly tell you that it's going to be a great race. Yeah, absolutely. We always have uh, these uh, great uh, drivers uh, at top, like Samborski, we have Olsen and Pinsky are all uh, very close, even uh, if uh, maybe the gaps uh, between uh, the top and the midfield uh, will be a bit wider this time around we still are gonna have uh, a great race and a lot of uh, things to follow along these uh, 50 45 minutes races yeah i i certainly love these races uh, all the time and uh i was in a few of these races earlier this morning it just brought back a lot of memories uh of casting but i can certainly tell you uh, for all the shiny new toys uh, here in December, I can tell you some of the guys are actually running that IRA 18 right now, which, I, no, no, not the IRA 18, that's the IndyCar, the IRA 01 right now, which is a, uh, well, she's a hassle, but she is so fun. Absolutely, I can vouch for that, uh, but even though it's uh, pretty deadly, especially around here, Suzuka has uh, some very, very nasty curves, uh, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if also the drivers uh, in the Formula 3.5 are gonna struggle a spoon, for example, or uh, under the bridge, where uh, if you have uh, too much throttle with the warm tires, the car tends to have a snap uh, over steer and uh, put you in the barrier. So something the drivers you also keep an eye on during the race. And heading into 130R, a unset up car going through there with DRS open is a recipe for disaster. So uh, you got to get your head through there cleanly, or you might just have to do a little bit of a uh, phantom lift uh, to deactivate DRS right as you go around there. But really, DRS has got that one spot right for 130R, and then I guess the front straight, but it doesn't really take a lot of power here. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, drivers will uh, have to close their DRS before they get to 130R. Remember that the driver have only eight uh, DRSs as we see Simone Pizzi uh, taking an alternative route uh, in the last corner, so he won't be able to improve. He was so taking the sure. Alan Plus line. Oh yeah, there is an alternative uh, layout here, the old Suzuka having the uh, tighter chicane at the end. Uh, but uh, it was uh, in the middle of both. We're looking at Rob Crouch sitting in fifth as it comes around for his second lap. Uh, other drivers that are new to this series, uh, Bahadur Ayan and uh, Antonio Jimenez, who are usually sitting in the split under this, but with the lower numbers we got here today, they made it into the top split. So new faces, let's see if they're going to bring us some surprises. Yeah, absolutely. I think they can uh, definitely profit from uh, these. Uh, they maybe don't have the speed that we are used to see from uh, the top guys. We cover uh, weekly 
here on Apex, but uh, you never know, maybe a bit of a mess at the start, some uh, spins or uh, crashes from uh, other opponents, they could uh, go home tonight with a solid result and uh, a little improvement in their AI rating, uh, considering their uh, lower AI rating compared to other drivers, they have more chances uh, even though they finish maybe uh, outside of the top 10. Yes, indeed. Big chance for these guys here today to gain some high rating and uh, well, have a good good race here today and uh, put a little bit smile on those faces. The Formula 3.5 broadcast is community funded. They Everyone in the community ships in and pays and anyone who pays over 20 euros to the uh, to the broadcast gets a free Apex Racing Academy silver package with that and Apex Racing Academy. This season has just started just started covering uh the Formula 3.5. So I can guarantee some of you, some of these drivers that are coming up here from the second split into the first split are on that package. As here is our qualifying order and starting order. Edward Samborsi starts up on pole, followed by Paul Ilbert, Greg Olson, James Pinksker, Rob Crouch, Simone Pizica, Nick Bradford, Luke Groom, Christopher Block. James Byrne, Jamie Byrne, Nikola Lashokin in 12th place. And they're followed by Philip Hillard, Simon Ayton, Clive Whittaker, Bahadin Ayton, Daniel Gallus, Art Haldberg, Antonio Jimenez, and James Mello at the end of this 20 car grid. We have a uh... Already quite a lot of drivers uh, sitting in the, on the grid. The top six, uh, the best and most experienced drivers, uh, all waiting for the last uh, few and seconds. We got, and we gotta say, welcome back to James Mallow. He was, uh, well, he had an injury. He was stuck in the hospital last season and uh, couldn't continue on. Well, he's back, and better than ever, I believe, and we're glad to have you back on the grid, James. Um, I was in a practice session with you earlier, and I was like, that name sounds awfully familiar, and I'm so glad to see it back. Absolutely. I, I can tell you everyone in the Formula 3.5 community is glad to have you back as well. Everybody's on the grid, Dustin, so green light coming up in uh, just a few seconds. Well, it was just a second as the five red lights coming on. Let's start the season out with a bang. Here we go. Racing here at Suzuka. And it's a great start by Paul Ilberg immediately beside of Everton Samborsi. Side by side heading into turn one. Back in the pack with three wide as they enter that double apex first turn. Ilberg down to the inside of Samborsi. Paul Ilberg takes the lead, but Samborsi's now got the inside as they head into the S's. They're going to go side by side, but Paul Ilberg takes, retakes the lead right there. Great start by Paul Ilbring. Not an easy task to pass on Borski as we have uh, some issues in the midfield. Uh, with some oh. cars uh, finding uh, the, the, uh, the barriers. Nick Bradford, Simon Ayton, behind in Ayton, and Daniel Gallus. Cars involved in that S turn incident. Not the way they wanted to start the race, considering they are drivers that are maybe not as used to be here in top speed. Uh, big chance I to. I also believe Arden Hollenberg was involved in there as well. Yeah, he's now at the tail end of the field uh, for the drive who has been had a major issue as we are with the Rob Crouch fighting for fifth position and uh, everybody following the lead, uh, Paul Hildring. Ooh, we have issues, a pizza guy oh, around. Luke Krum and Smoke Pizza are in the wall at Spoon. Not the day he wanted for Simone Pizzica having issues at the start, dropping four position on the starting grid, and now finding himself. Oh, um, it's just a... too much speed. Uh, that was uh, very, very bad. Too much speed. Uh, I would say too much mustard into there, but I think it was just too much mustard on the brakes as they just didn't seem to catch on right there. Well, they will have uh, other 11 weeks to redeem themselves, but uh, definitely not uh, a great start of the season for these drivers. As we have uh, a lot of battles in the middle, Whittaker and Hillard side by side for ninth place. Oh, and Philip 
Harlard! Oh, I think they got Hillard got a big slide right there. Almost getting touched by Lasjokin. And uh, on that re entry. Yeah, I think Nikita clipped. Uh, he left the there. Let's see if we can uh, see from this replay on board uh, with the American. Ooh. Well, it, it was a net code hit. Very close. But great livery, obviously. Mm -hmm. Beautiful old uh, McLaren livery. We always love to see it. Like uh, the Jordan gives a bit of competition to the Jordan we are used to see every weekend here. Yeah, that Jordan is back. Uh, it's a bit farther up the field, driven by James Gay Painter. Back in that Jordan this year. James Marlow, already seven places up. Together with Antonio Jimenez, uh, they are the biggest movers of the race so far, starting all the way at the tail end of the field. Yeah, James Marlow up seven, up seven spots. He's looking at eighth place right now. Down onto the inside, tell us Malo around the outside. Heading into the chicane, and James Malo makes up his eighth spot and moving up through the grid. What a return in form for James Malo. Great pass around the outside. I think Antonio let him uh, go there. He braked a little bit and gave him plenty of space, but we are so early on in the race that uh, obviously you have to give a little bit and maybe you can take later on during the race if you save your tires, as we see Simone Pizzica and Tim Pitrod. Definitely is day over. Dagna one and two. Rob Crouch chasing down James G.A. Pinks here. And this section of the track is very finicky uh, with this car, especially getting onto the throttle. Very easy to light up the rears here and meet the wall. I can tell you from experience about seven times of practice I hit that wall. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, also with the new car, the Dallara, it's uh, one of the toughest parts of the track. It's, not it's a easy. very rubber in part of the circuit later in the race. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like a Laguna Seca, kind of like uh, there is a beach uh, on the track uh, with all the residuals uh, being broke by drivers rejoining. But uh, let's talk about this uh, five-man breakaway. We have like a uh, kind of like in cycling, we have uh, the main peloton at the back and uh, the breakaway at the front with these five drivers, all uh, very close uh, with each other, as you can see from the lap times. Uh, Samborski, we are 42.9, uh, the only drivers below the 43 mark, and uh, behind them, everybody running around the 44 mark, so almost a second faster per lap. Uh, Usual suspects up here, uh, you know how on, in F1 they have uh, F1 and F1.5 with the midfield, well, with these guys, they're all pretty much, we always see them near the top of the uh, top of the race, and then you have Tim Delisle doing his own thing, and Robert Tarleton as well. But these group of five, they've always been nose to tail with each other, no matter what race and what circuit. Um, and it's nice to see them battling out here with this top five, Evan Samborski and Paul Ilbrink, though, pulling away from those other three drivers. Uh, James Pacer, Rob Crouch, and Chris, uh, and Greg Olson. Almost like that, sorry. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. These drivers are uh, exceptional behind the wheel of this car. Whenever, whoever wants to start uh, doing uh, Formula Renault 3.5, you have to keep them like uh, as a reference uh, for their driving. Whenever you have a chance to race with them, uh, even in practice, uh, just have a look at their lap times, how they approach the corners and you will definitely improve a lot. It's not a very easy car, and uh, I know for experience that these guys are uh, very willing to help hit whoever wants to get closer to this car. It's a very welcoming community. Uh, a lot of these guys are very open to help out as they all pay for this broadcast. They all chip in, 
because they believe this is one of the most fun cars on iRacing to race. And I got to say, it is pretty much the most fun car on iRacing to race. Uh, the R8, the R01, almost into the car there, again, uh, is very fun as it tries to kill you every time. This is very fun and it doesn't try to kill you every time. It's oh, like yeah. a curve. Absolutely. The curve, uh, whatever car you are uh, running, are always not your friend around Suzuka, to be fair. Unless it's a Lambo. The Lambo pretty much absorbs those curves. I haven't really drove that car that much, but uh, Formula cars uh, around uh, Suzuka and curves uh, don't really get on well. Especially the curb strides at Negna 1 and 2, just hitting those things pops the car up and they're like mini ramps right there. Yeah, going through the field at the moment at the back with drivers having issues earlier on, but uh, looking at the top end of our uh, standings, uh, Ilbrink uh, leading uh, by almost a second to Samborski. You can see how the lap times are uh, pretty close. Yeah, only separated uh, by lap times by a tenth year, tenth there. Uh, sometimes going to Sam Borski, sometimes going to Paul Ilbrink. And a lot of drivers putting in different purple sectors. Uh, I know Sam Borski just put in the fastest lap of the race. Paul Ilbrink put in the fastest sector three of the race. And taking uh, the fastest sector one of the race is Rob Crouch. So the purple sector times are all over the board. Yeah, the drivers are definitely pushing. You can see... Every time, uh, every lap, uh, someone is uh, getting their personal best. This time is Rob Crouch at the tail end of his uh, leading group, uh, getting uh, his uh, personal best lap. But they are still all uh, very, very close to each other. So we are not even uh, one fourth through the race. So we will see then with the uh, tire wear kicking in uh, later on if the gaps uh, will uh, be opening up or uh, eventually also if uh, someone will make a mistake. Well, Suzuka being one of the most drive tracks here on iRacing, everyone knows this track, but I feel like that well-knownness of the track can uh, kind of bring... It, it can kind of bring a little bit of a overconfidence, some might say, into a few of these corners. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely agree with that, Austin. This track uh, is uh, for sure known by almost everybody who regularly races on the roadside. But at the same time, at least for me, it's always very tricky every time whenever I come here to race. I, I feel like uh, other tracks uh, I have more confidence. Around here, sometimes uh, I just have none. Well, Suzuka is a very famous track, especially in Japan, not only for Formula One, uh, but also uh, Super GT racing as well as uh, Super GP racing. And don't get me started about K-Car racing. I won't. <laughs> as uh, James Mallow in 12th place is uh, still uh, hanging on to that position after a great start. And here we are on board with uh, Christopher Block defending from one of the Burns. Uh, seven place for Jamie Burn uh, and eight place for James Burns. Usually they are racing as a tandem in the very close to each other. Today they are a little bit of separation. Yeah, Burns is not here. Uh, Theodore Burns is, uh, he's not here as well to be in the middle of them. It's usually Burns, Burns the Burn. Uh, but now it's just Burn to Burn. Keeping in very tidy so far, and uh, possibly also trying to maintain uh, a few DRSs for the end of the race, uh, as uh, yeah. I'm sure these guys up front are doing. I don't see anybody activating DRS right now on this uh, main straight. Ooh, we have uh, Antonio Jimenez Tellies uh, around at the airpin, I think. Yep, that's exactly at the hairpin. You see him trying to catch up to Arndt Holleberg. 
Heading into the brick zone, and then just rides up onto the curb, and, well, actually, I wouldn't even say too much mustard on there. That's just riding up on the curb and letting the car get taken with it. Yeah, this tire got glued to the curb there. Didn't want to leave it anymore. <sighs> Trying to hook the wheel on the curb like you, like you do in initial D. Now we have uh, issues for Nikita Lastoshkin in his McLaren. Deep in the hair deep in the chicane and he's been caught now by James Malo. Too much and, curb. Yeah, too much curb right there. I thought it was just a deep issue, but no, it was a uh, full on spin rooney. In the end, uh, not the ma nothing major. He managed to get started uh, back again. He only lost a few seconds. Uh, and he's still sitting in 11th place. He only lost contact uh, with uh, Philippe Pilard. And the car is in one piece, so just... Uh, he might have been ahead of Philippe Pilard. Yeah, he yeah, was, uh, I think, in the same... Running together with him. As we have another on board. And it's his Philip. And there's the shot kid. And... Yep, there it goes. You always need to be careful whenever you rejoin. After obviously trying to rejoin as safe as possible, also to make sure that your uh, rear tires are not uh, overheated because uh, it's very difficult in a racing two minutes to lower the temperatures after a big spin. As we have a burn trying to pass Christopher Block. And blocks the out, he have it, but Bird swings it around the outside on the exit. Very clean racing, everybody giving uh, each other plenty of space. You don't want to clip uh, someone with your front wing uh, and uh, then also have uh, to race uh, the remaining of uh, the time with a broken uh, wing. It's going to cost you a lot of time so, so far. Great battle between the two. Yeah, amazing battle for third place and second. See here the lap comparison between the leader, Paul Hilbring and Edward Samborski. Still uh, very, very close. But everybody in the leading top, in the top five are uh, running more or less the same pace. Although Samborski managed to get another lap time below the 43, 142, 98 last time by, so it's probably because of this great helmet, uh, I don't know. It, 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 that helmet is about 30% of performance added. It, it yeah, definitely he, helps him. It, it definitely helps him in uh, crash situations because he is right for the job and he's great for uh, data collecting. Uh, you think uh, if this car ever got a new damage model, uh, we we think uh, they might use some of his data as Samborski sends it down low. It's actually not a car for position. I think yeah, it was a lap car. I was trying to. Indeed. No, 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 it's oh. Bahad in. Ah. A car we are not used to see uh, quite a lot, uh, so two cars a while to actually understand who was in the middle. But I, I, I was counting the cars and I saw six, but uh, I wasn't sure. So yeah, I, a, I was confused too. <laughs> he made uh, the job uh, a bit. Uh, tougher than expected. It was Samborski. a great move, by the way. It was a great move. Samborski lost uh, quite a lot of time behind uh, Badi Nayan, and now Paul Inbring, uh, opened uh, a gap of almost uh, two seconds, so I bet Edward won't be quite happy with uh, the international driver. Yep. Paul uh, is going to be very... He's going to be happy about that. He can actually save up on his DRS. But speaking of DRS, Sam Borski can use that and catch up 
to Paul Ilbrink um, and close that gap as quickly as he can. But I feel like he just needs to be running his own race and uh, trying to focus on uh, keeping it clean and staying ahead of Greg Olson. Yeah, absolutely. Greg Olson is uh, very close. He's uh, eight he tenths behind. To his name. Oh, yeah. I think uh, someone might not be happy for uh, using probably another account for today, lowering the SOF of this race. But uh, obviously everyone is free to do whatever they feel to. And uh, it's important he's here with us tonight. So giving us uh, another great uh, race to commentate on as we have a pass. Uh, and it's uh, Malo on Alberg. Well, Malo, biggest mover, up eight spots. Here's that replay. Heading out of the chicane. I just love this chicane, I gotta say. I don't. I, it always creates me a lot of trouble. I, I'm probably bad at that, but... Uh, uh, to be fair, I prefer long way the Chuzuka East Circuit. The track that once got uh, used by the WTCC many years ago we have too much mustard here for Aton. Nice. now we can say yes my own Ayrton too much mustard through the spoon as we're looking at the mustard colored car of Jamie Byrne a little bit of ketchup in there yeah Belka didn't lose much time uh, from uh, Byrne after being passed a few laps ago Yeah, no, Block stayed with him. He's definitely stayed in the draft. You can see how much they have to work on the wheel exiting that uh, chicane. The car wants to release the horsepower, the total amount of horsepower, but you always have to tame it a little bit. Uh, he's sliding quite a lot. Speaking of taming, Christopher Block having to tame the rear end down, and he's basically riding a bull right now, and he's got a nice little bull on the front and on the back wing. It does say bull. So, uh, he's got the bull, the blue bull right here of Christopher Block sitting at 7th. It's been a long race for him, so if his tires are already starting to give up right now at lap 12, he has still uh, 10 laps left, so it's gonna be a handful. Somebody close the China shop and get everything out of there. Semborski's incident! He's off at Spoon! Yeah, I saw with uh, on, on one side of the screen a car uh, leaving the trackers and was indeed Samborski now defending from Crouch oh. side side. Baha Dan getting in the way of Rob Crouch who is definitely not happy about that move as that fight that fight is getting very nasty between the two. Paul Ilbring had a little bit of off track and oh, oh, rare mistake by him. That chicane has caught already plenty of drivers of guard. As we, when we go back to our replay, Samborski getting the curb as per usual and oh. then loses the car almost on exit. It could That's have been definitely much worse. It could have been. As James A. Pacer and Greg Olson are now catching up to Paul Ilbrink. And uh, that fight for second it has now turned into the fight for the lead. Indeed, uh, Pinsker uh, has been very quiet so far. And uh, now he has a chance uh, to really pull uh, for the win. He's been oh, around. He did not have driver radio on. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. 
I've listened to a few of these drivers on the radio as and I can tell you some of the tensions are heated and then uh, some of them are a little bit joking with each other. James A. Peaser is actually uh, to ask he'll bring just a little bit if uh, he just went through a time hole or something happened. <laughs> and here comes Olsen looking down the inside early on the brakes just letting him know that he's there. Yeah, great uh, braking uh, by James Pinska managed to defend the second position and now also hasn't uh, the speed exiting the chicane to try to attack without someone uh, exiting pit road and uh, I believe that was Aiton. It is Aiton. Three stopping on the track. Uh, great uh, he, he's diving on the there. Pit, he's on the pit exit so he didn't want to uh, be that slow chicane into Absolutely. that double double apex corner. We've seen those incidents in practice and uh, this is a great track. You need, you need to be aware of what is uh, around you and uh, obviously not racing anybody at this point for Aiton unfortunately he managed to let everybody by and uh, merge onto the track uh, safety. So safety is always use the F3. Yeah, but here you, you uh, they are using a F3.5 so they should have raced uh, two year, two hours ago. So. As in the key. <laughs> but let's go back to racing. That's much better uh, than uh, my fans. Greg Olson is changing his head at us right now. Yeah, I think we lost uh, our produ production. I think we will have to work by uh, our own. Are you ready to, to take uh, the camera, Olson? I might, but I don't want to leave this camera angle right now because this is a great fight we got going on. Absolutely. Olson always looking uh, at the back end of uh, Pinsker. He definitely wants to get uh, by very soon. We have. Uh, we are entering right now lap 15 and Pinsker defending the inside from us. It's definitely not a place where you can uh, attempt a, a pass and also definitely knows it. It's also difficult to follow with the dirty air. More about dirty air, I can tell you Chain Bear actually had a great uh, song about that released this morning. Uh, and I think that the... you've, been, you've been nominated uh, for the worst pun of 2021 already. So, oh, I'm uh, absolutely stuck with this award. It's like uh, the products uh, that uh, whenever they have an ad, they say best product of 2021 and we are still in 2020, oh. you know? Well, very aggressive uh, here very also. Very aggressive look and uh, first pun of you of the season, that will give you the worst pun award, but, uh, you know, we'll see if you can uh, have any non other nominations uh, so far this season as Nikola Leshotkin has fallen down a little bit. Olsen, another look down the inside of James A. Fains here. He's looked once, he's looked twice, he's gonna look again. Third time's the charm, he's not gonna go for it. And James went a little bit deep on the brakes right there. Might be driving in the mirrors just slightly as Olsen is ramping up the pressure here in Suzuka. Yeah, much faster right now behind him, uses the DRS and uh, goes around the outside, but I think uh, this is not uh, good he enough. It. He's off in the Astro turf, and James A. Pizzer holding that inside line, able to stay ahead in second place. He tried uh, to make the pass happen with a great uh, move around the outside, but unfortunately it didn't work. Back. Let's uh, have a look at the battle for P10 between Hitler and the uh, Stockspin. Stockin lost spots up here. As we as also live with Shotskin has been involved in an incident as well. And it's a multi-car incident. Uh Arnt Hallberg, Philip Pollard, and the Shotskin 
I've been involved and I believe this is a replay and OH mm. NO! It got very spicy in here. Oh no! Just like a replay of, of uh, the season finale at Suzuka in the Super GT round that happened here uh, just a few weeks ago. On the straight, Philip Hiller just holding his line down the inside. It comes back just a little bit and goes for a ride. He was thinking he'd be at the theme park next door. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, okay. Well, just right there, and then he just a little kink off the side fencing. And the landing could have worked a little bit, but uh, his mid air technique was just superb. Yeah, a free ride. I mean, he didn't need to go to the Moosman Park to meet yeah, uh, no. Steve Myers and Dave Jr. Hey, they're actually on the outside of the theme park, even though I think Suzuka and that theme park are now kind of together, but that Ferris wheel is in uh, Suzuka property. I do have to say they have a great inverted coaster over there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But uh, it's, a, it's a tried and true uh, model of Batman the Ride. Austin, do you want to talk about uh, this uh, great comeback from Jace Mario that now Profiting from uh, some uh, issues up uh, front uh, is a uh, top ten. Top ten, yeah. James Mahler, top ten biggest mirror of the race, and I would say biggest recovery of the year of 2020. Out of it, uh, after getting involved in an accident, getting stuck in hospital, having the entire Formula 3.5 community uh, praying for him, wanting to see him back. Well, he's back and better than ever, Malo back in the top 10. Welcome back, James. Meantime, gaps up front uh, between uh, Paul Ibring and Pinsker opened up to almost 2.5 seconds, but Pinsker and Olsen are still fighting really hard for that second uh, spot. You can see here also the breakdown in the sectors. Very even but uh, still uh, also hasn't found his uh, way to pass uh, Pinska yet. I think Olsen has found the way. He's just uh, being a little bit sure and uh, might just try to be a little bit of thorn in James' side. It's definitely not going to be this time by, but his big chance to go for it is definitely that triangle chicane. That's been his tried and true method, but he has to find that right opportunity to upset James going into there. Yeah, I think uh, he might have a bigger shot uh, on the start-finish uh, straight, because Pinskare is uh, very, very good under braking at the chicane. He, dips, uh, he breaks uh, a little bit deeper, so I think uh, Olsen will have a hard time to pass him, but uh, if he's a uh, Still close enough uh, on the second part, uh, uh, on the straight finish, uh, straight, sorry. He can definitely try to make something happen if uh, Pinsker runs out of DRSs, for example. Well, last time by, Greg also put in the fast lap of the race of 142.87. And he is glued to that gearbox right now as they head through Spoon. Let's see if uh, Olson uh, will get uh, very, very close. He's not using it, no. Still, uh, Slipstream uh, giving him a bit of an advantage, but he's too far away. This time he's looking, but uh, he's just trying to upset Pinsker, applying some pressure on the driver. A little bit. I know Halloween is long and gone, but still, definitely going to be spooking him. Paul well, Hildbring uh, with his uh, best uh, lap of the race, a uh, 42.94. So he's uh, one of the few drivers uh, who managed to break the 43 mark, as we have uh, still the issues uh, for Simon Ayton. He went off track uh, a few seconds ago in 15th place. Black car is getting a few of the driver's uh, nerves right now as, uh, well, some of them are having blue flag woes. Uh, 
some might say. Oh yeah, and blue flags are always uh, a big topic in uh, eye racing. Always yeah. uh, in the middle of uh, discussions uh, in uh, every event. Oh, a slide, an almost identical incident to what happened to Sam Borski. See another run towards the 130R for James Pinska. Uh, yeah, cross googly eyes on uh, his helmet. I haven't. I guess I was. And you get to see the map ground gained by Ooh, Olsen. Side that side. by side, entering the corner, but deep onto the brakes goes Pease here. Olsen looking for the switch back, but it's not going to be done as Pease made that car extra wide right there. Two laps to go. Fastest lap of the race for Poli Ilbring now 3.5 seconds ahead, although he made a mistake earlier on. And uh, he's absolutely flying. Indeed, his head down and run his own race as these two guys are having head up and uh, some are throwing attacks, some are throwing defense, and some are throwing the kitchen sink at each other. We haven't seen yeah. the big move yet, but I can tell you, you'll know it when you see it. <laughs> somebody that definitely wants to see some moves happening in front uh, is Samboski, who is uh, 1.7 seconds behind uh, Greg Olson. He wants to bounce back and get a uh, second position back after the mistake he did earlier on. But uh, looks uh, unlikely so far if uh, these two don't uh, fight really, really hard. For Samborski, he will be definitely be disappointed for not getting a second place out of this race. But at the same time, I would also look at the other side uh, because obviously that uh, mistake would have uh, ended this race. Here comes Greg. Five moments on the overtakes. Uh, 130 R chicane front straight, and then one all over again. Uh, and here comes Olsen once more down the inside, heading into the outside. He's got the lead heading into the corner. He's going to power Peaster wide. Greg Olsen into the chicane. Comes into second place. White flag in the air. Let's see if Pinsker uses the RS around the... Oh, he's got it wide yeah. open. Here comes James round the outside. Making it count, cutting it off the nose. James J. Pinsker back into second place. Great, uh, great pass, great battle. These drivers are giving us uh, an amazing showcase in this opening round of the Formula Renault 3.5 Challenge. What a way to start the season, Austin. What a great way to start the season. Put in a little uh, memento for the rest of the field, saying I'm the king in the midfield. I'm going for that top spot in my division. And... Tim, you're next. Though I'm not actually reading his thoughts, I just feel like that's what he's thinking right now. But well, first, he's got to catch the ball. But he's definitely trying to bridge that gap of the midfield to uh, the top players. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Paul Ilbrink, uh, our leader, but let's keep an eye on this battle because Olson uh, is uh, a bit too far. But uh, all that comes down to DRS, uh, and if he has uh, the chance to oh, look... Oh, uh, Peter's at DRS. He can't catch yeah. him. Absolutely. No, you see the gap uh, didn't come down. Oh, he's looking, but uh, was uh, a bit of an optimistic move. As Paul Ibring is uh, crossing right now, the checker flag for Paul Ibring is our race winner with the fastest lap of the race on the last lap. Great. Uh, race for him. Jane Pinsker finishes in second place uh, in front of Greg Olson and fourth place for Edward Samborski recovering from a spin halfway through the race. Rob Crouch fifth and uh, now the first of the burn. As per usual. Ahead of James Byrne. They head into sixth and seventh. 
What a race we saw here, and what a fight for second between James A. Payson getting immediately back with DRS. He was just waiting for Greg uh, to use his up, and then uh, it didn't seem like Greg had any back as he used pretty much all of it at the start of this race. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very beautiful race. Uh, the top uh, five uh, gave us a uh, an amazing showcase today. A mistake, a rare mistake for Samborski. Cost him uh, what he built uh, in the qualifying. Getting the pole position. The only thing that Paul Liebling didn't achieve today, Austin. Yeah, you know, he pretty much had the... Yeah, he did not do the Grand Slam as he was just... Uh, everything except for the pole. But Paul Elbrink is your winner here today and takes the lead in the Formula 3.5 championship as, uh, well, the broadcast championship as the overall season goes every single which way until the end of the season. But Paul Elbrink takes the win, followed by James J. Pazier, Greg Peels, and Edward Samborski, Rob Crouch, Jamie Byrne, James Byrne, Christopher Block, Clive Whittaker, James Mallow, Art Holleberg, Antonio Tellez. Daniel Gallis, Mahadin Ayan, Simon Ayanton, Nikita Leschotkin, Philip Hillard, Simon Pizica, Luke Groom, and Nick Bradford at the end of this grid with a uh, few drivers uh, just having some great races and a few drivers, uh, well, hitting the scrapyard after this. But what a race, Alessandro. Uh, How is your reaction to this season opener? Well, definitely, I'm uh, really, really happy to have watched this race because the racing in this series is always a uh, super high level. These guys are uh, great, and uh, I'm looking forward for the next uh, events for sure because uh, seeing drivers master the car that uh, most of us normal high racers uh, struggle to take to the uh, start finish line uh, every lap in practice uh, is uh, amazing well i'm standing by with the man who's mastered this car around suzuka has done everything except get up pole here but he did everything that mattered which is uh, the win and lead every, every single lap ladies and gentlemen please welcome paul ilbrink hello hello thanks paul how is that race and uh how does it feel to win the first race of the season Pretty good, like, uh, yeah, I'm like, quite happy. Would have been nicer if, like, the top guys from last season were here as well, like Tim and, uh, how about the, uh, Robert. Um, but, yeah, uh, still a good oh. race against, uh, Greg and James and Eddie. So, yeah, had a lot of fun, had a good start. So, that kind of made my race, I guess. So, yeah, I'm satisfied. It's always great to be satisfied after a good win. It looks like you might have came into a little bit of a, uh, a fight again throughout the race after a small issue, but you regrouped yourself and then you got back going. Uh, with the introduction of the IR01, do you think uh, that's going to affect some of the participation? Uh, well, it's, it seems that way. Like, I don't know. Um... I hope not, but it's this is still a car uh, that's f very fun to drive, I think. So, uh, yeah, especially those guys that raced last season. I mean, come on, don't need that much practice to uh, get <laughs> as well. So just uh, take like 15 minutes before the race and do this race as well. So it should be fine. So yeah, uh, let's uh, race this car as well. Well, I'm certainly glad to see you back in the Formula 3.5. Hopefully we see everyone else back as well. It's just a little bit of a holiday break. I, I give it a little bit of a pass. But, uh, Paul, it's a great to have you back, and it's great to see you on the ch on the top step of the podium for Let's Go Anyone you want to thank. Uh, yeah, you guys uh, for uh, doing a nice broadcast, uh, organizers uh, of this uh broadcast race anyway and uh, my teammates at Radicals Online and our partners and sponsors uh, Armour Centrum, Grenfell Simulation, Track Racer, Joe Realtime, Turn Racing, MOTF Podcast, Six Sideways and Pixel Dust 
and uh, all those uh, great guys that uh, actually did uh, come here to race tonight. So uh, yeah, I hope to see you again next week. And we hope to see you again as well as we go over to Alessandro Daldone, who's standing by with James J. Pinsker. Yes, indeed, uh, James. Uh, welcome back to the booth. Second place today. You did a great job of fighting with Greg today. That was a heck of a battle. Yep, I don't disagree. Really enjoyed that one. Oof. Yeah, the fight went on uh, for a lot of laps and uh, Greg was uh, looking really, really aggressive uh, behind you and then he made that pass work, but you got back with the DRS. Uh, talk us through how, how was your race. Well, um, it was enjoyable. I mean, we had... We were missing Tim and uh, Robert today, which was kind of sad. But um, we started a pretty good, like, uh, like that top five train at the start, which then kind of gradually dispersed as the race went on. I don't think I really had quite the pace today. I think I was a bit definitely slower than Paul and uh, Ed, and kind of a bit slower than Greg as well. And Rob was actually looking pretty impressive at the start as well, and he kind of fell off. But um, yeah, I just made everything that came my way work. There was that lap. I can't remember what lap it was, but like the entire top five except me, like made a mistake, like all at the same time. Like that was so funny. I just overtook like two people, and then I saw Paul right in front of me as well. And I was like, "Wow, what, what, what's got on here?" Um, and then yeah, from there it was just um, defending, being strategic with my DRS placement, um, and defending always the inside line into the chicane, just trying to keep Greg behind. Um, and I just about did it, I guess. So I'm pretty happy with that. Oh yeah, absolutely. We were uh, really, really uh, start to see how the top five was running the same lap times uh, for uh, the first uh, five or six lap of the race. It was uh, incredible, consistent. And uh, then the battle, obviously, as you said, was amazing. Uh, the way you fight uh, with uh, Greg was uh, remarkable. And it was on... Uh, Watkins Glen, a classic boot uh, next week. Hopefully we we'll see even more people considering Watkins Glen is uh, one of the most uh, used uh, track uh, on A-Racing. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting. Um, and yeah, it's a very popular track, I know. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's, not, it's not a personal favorite of mine. Suzuka definitely is. I love Suzuka. Um, and that's why I'm pumped to get such a good result here. Uh, I don't know. I think Watkins is a very different track, a lot of long corners, constant radius, uh, you should have some really good race. I know every single season we go there, and every single season you'll see massive slipstream trains, um, massive amounts of battling going on down that long straight, so uh, I'm sure for you guys watching the race there's a lot to look forward to. Oh yeah, absolutely, we will uh, be looking forward for that race without the bus stop, uh, definitely is gonna spike things up. Anybody you want to thank, uh, James, before we let you go? Uh, well, I, I, I could, um, I doubt anyone from Fanatec is watching, but my wheel developed an issue where it started randomly pressing the DRS button for me, which wasted some of my DRS on this race, which made, which made the battle between me and Greg more intense, but I would rather them not. So if anyone from Fanatec is watching, please fix that. Um, uh, I'd like to congratulate Paul on probably one of his more boring race wins. Um, he did a good job today. Um, I thank Greg, we had a good battle and he kept it clean. Um, and not everyone keeps it clean in that kind of hard racing that we had, but it was all clean and fair and enjoyable. Uh, I'd like to thank Apex Racing TV for providing the stream, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't really have anyone else to thank. Go ahead. Well, thank you for joining us, James. Uh, hopefully we can uh, catch you also next week, Austin, you are uh, alongside uh, Greg right now, third place, uh, another uh, great drive for him. Yeah, Greg, you had a great race. Uh, it came down to the wire with you and James uh, with one lap to go, uh, well, two laps to go, really heading into the white flag lap. You put a move on James after constantly looking down the inside, outside, uh, all over you were just all over the place with james but uh you finally got that move made down the straight and then james got it back but how was that fight between you and james yeah it was uh it was a really enjoyable fight actually um i'd already used my drs up quite early and uh i used my last one up um 
lapping lapping a driver. So yeah, my, I knew my best chance was probably going to be like around the outside of the chicane. I've done that one before, and um, it, it does require a lot of cooperation from the other driver. Um, but James is a is a great driver, and he he facilitated the move really well. And um, fortunately, it turns out James had a lot of DRS left, so there wasn't much I could do on the next straight. So look, whatever, he managed it better than I did, and uh, yeah, got the podium. So congrats to him. Yeah, James had a great race, and uh, fortunately the DRS thing uh, just didn't work out your way. But you had a great start to your race and a uh, very tight and challenging race with uh, being stuck in a five-car battle throughout the most start of the, about seven laps. Yeah, it was uh, it was really tight. Um, I guess, yeah, that's probably why I felt compelled to use a lot of DRS at the beginning. And... Um, yeah, I was I was happy seeing where I was, and then I saw uh, Ed made that mistake at Spoon, so I thought, great, you know, P two, and then and then I made a mistake, and then Paul made a mistake, and it was just uh, it was just chaos. It kind of it was pretty boring up to that point, and then it just sort of all hell broke loose. So it was uh, it was really fun. Banana peels out on track. Sorry, that's what happens in the off season. That they just end up there. I stay back at school, so you know, I think we can all be forgiven. <laughs> All right. Well, next week is Watkins Glen and a classic boot. You excited for that race? Yeah, I mean it wasn't that long ago that um that we raced at Watkins Glen and uh it was a it was a pretty interesting race, I think. So yeah, looking forward to it. Nice and high speed, pretty pretty cool to drive. So yeah, uh looking forward to it. Awesome. Well thank you, Greg, for let you go. Anyone you want to thank. Yeah, I'd just like to thank Positive Sim Racing. Uh, I know Tim's not here. He's, uh, I think he was going to mention this when uh, at the end of last race, but he never got the chance. So I'll do it on his behalf, but uh, he's focusing on the new car. So, but anyway, um, either, either way, um, just uh, yeah, thank everyone in the team uh, for their support and uh, you guys for the broadcast. All right. Well, we thank you, Greg, for uh, showing up and putting on a great show in that good old 3.5. Alessandro, any closing words? Well, uh, I think we summed up uh, the race uh, earlier on, uh, Austin. That was definitely a great way to start the season. And uh, definitely, although we missed a few of our uh, competitors uh, compared to last uh, season, we had a blast also today. I think before we let uh, everybody go to sleep or uh, to whatever you're doing your, uh, during your day, we would also re remind that uh, Formula 3.5 Challenge setups are available on uh, the Apex Academy with the Apex Racing Academy membership. We have uh, plenty of data packs, setups, track guides. Uh, in it is integrated with Virtual Racing School, coaching section sessions uh, with uh, pro drivers. Uh, so anything you might need uh, for your racing uh, together with uh, Virtual Racing School. So you have. Uh, a vast variety of uh, setups you could uh, uh, put for your uh, iRacing career. And also SDK Gaming, uh, our uh, beautiful uh, uh, virtual uh, live uh, HUD, as uh, Marco is showcasing right now on your screen. So a great way to spice things up in your beautiful streams uh, if you are racing or uh, to broadcast your leagues. I uh, wanted to do this uh, shout out for all these sponsors that are making this broadcast possible with uh, also this uh, great community that is uh, founding uh, this uh, broadcast are always uh, a pleasure to watch and it's obviously thanks to them if we can all uh, watch this uh, amazing racing every weekend. Now yeah, the amazing races continue on next week here on Apex Racing TV for the Formula 3.5 at Watkins Glen Classic Boot. I've been joined by Alessandro Daladane with Marco Barbadera in the production booth. I'm on tonight, and I hope y'all have a great night. Virtual Racing School was developed to provide support to the next generation of sim racers. No matter if you're a rookie or veteran or what car or track you'll be racing, our goal is to provide training every step of the way. We found that iRacing can be quite difficult without proper training. 
there needed to be a way to prepare for on-track racing. With VRS, you can literally learn from the best sim racers in the world, including four-time NASCAR iRacing world champion Ray Alfala. And Ray Alfala is a four-time champion of the NASCAR Peak Antifreeze iRacing Series. Three-time iRacing Grand Prix world champion Martin Kronke. Martin Kronke becomes a three-time world champion. Rallycross world champion Mitchell de Jong. Mitchell de Jong is now champion for the iRacing Rallycross World Championship Series. And many other top sim racers. Data packs include everything you need to start learning. Our world championship coaches create the data packs by setting a hot lap or a series of fast laps for you to compare, analyze, and replicate. Data packs also include a tutorial where the coach points out techniques they use to hit the fast lap. This gives you access to the latest driving techniques and setups before you even hit the track. Sign up for a free account and download the VRS telemetry logger. With this application running seamlessly in the background, your laps automatically start syncing to the VRS website. From there, you can analyze and compare two laps of your choice, whether it's your data, the coaches, or your teammates. VRS will automatically target improvement opportunities so you can get up to speed even faster. VRS also makes it easy for you to request and schedule one-on-one -on -one or group coaching sessions. These sessions can range from 30 to 90 minutes and you can select the car, track and setup combination of your choice. Visit virtualracingschool.com today to sign up and get started.